All right, so in the last video we talked about arithmetic sequences. We kind of talked about the variables associated with it. So in this one, what I'd like to do is just work through some examples so that we have an idea of what we're looking for. So the first one here asks us to find the hundredth term of the sequences above. All right, now I took the liberty of just copying the sequences down from what we did earlier. So now we're just going to find the hundredth term. Now if you'll remember, back at the beginning, the term number was n. And so in our equation, if I want the hundredth term, I just need to replace n with 100. We'll leave the equations there. Why not? So let's go ahead and put 100 in. So we're just going to say u100, the hundredth term, is equal to 2 plus 100 minus 1 times 3. And easy as cake, we'll call for Mr. Calculator. We'll go 2 plus... 100 minus 1, which is 99, times 3, and there we go. We got 299. So U100 equals 299. Easy, huh? Let's do it for the other one. So UN, U100 equals 31 plus 100 minus 1 times negative 4. And again, We'll call up our calculator, which we'll move to the side so we can see it a little bit better. We'll go 31 plus 100 minus 1, which is 99, times negative 4. And there we go. We got negative 365. Negative 365. All right, there you go. That's all there is to it. Not too bad, huh? Not too bad at all. All right, anyway, let's move along. Let's try something else. Is negative 14 a member of the second sequence? Okay, so here's the sequence right here. It's asking if negative 14 is one of the numbers. So how do we check that out? Well, you put negative 14 in for un because un is the specific term. So we'll say negative 14. And if negative 14 is really a member of this sequence, then I can solve for n, and I can find out which number it is in the sequence. So solve away. We'll subtract the 31, which will give us negative 45, which then will be equal to n minus 1 times negative 4. Now, at this point, you can either distribute the negative 4 and work with it from there, or we can just divide both sides by negative 4, which is what I'm going to do because it looks like it'll be a little easier. So I divide negative by a negative, which is positive. So 45 over 4, I'm going to leave it as a fraction because that doesn't divide evenly, equals n minus 1. And I note that when I add 1 to both sides, that I'm going to get uh, add 4 to the top, 49 over 4, because 1 is the same thing as 4 over 4, which is equal to n. Now, n, if you'll remember from our discussion the previous day, n is positive integers. And so I'm not getting a positive integer, I'm getting a fraction. And so therefore, no, negative 14 is not a member of this series, It's going or this sequence. It's going to skip right over it. Let's try another one. Here's an interesting one. Three consecutive terms in an arithmetic sequence are... 3k plus 1, k, and negative 3. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because it doesn't tell us that those are the first terms or the last terms or anything else. So for this one, we're actually going to use the idea that the difference has to be constant. Okay. Now, remember to find the common difference, we have to do one term minus the term in front of it. So for example, k minus 3k plus 1 will give us the common difference. Now, interestingly, if I do negative 3 minus k, that should also give me the constant difference. Now, at this point, you'll see I do have two variables, which are k and d, but I have two equations. And so because we have two equations, we can solve by substitution or elimination or whatever else we want. This one, since they're both equal to d, probably easier to just do substitution, take this, and plug it in. And so that's what we'll do. So we'll go k. I'm going to go ahead and distribute the minus. So minus 3k 
minus 1 equals d, but d is equal to negative 3 minus k. And so now I'll put the like terms together. I did put an x there, but I know I said k. k minus 3k is negative 2k. I almost did it again. Minus 1 equals negative 3 minus k. We'll add the 2k to both sides. And now we're just cruising along. We'll add the 3 to both sides while we're at it. So I'm moving the k's to the right side. I'm moving the, the numbers to the, the left side. And so that will give me those cancel out. 3 plus 1 is 2. 3 plus negative 1 is 2. Equals those cancel out. And k. So k equals 2. Now, if you wanted to check that, you could actually plug the 2 in for the k. So that would be 3 times 2, which is 6 plus 1 is 7. And then k is 2 and then negative 3. And you see there is a constant difference. We're subtracting 5 each time. So d is 5. Neg uh, negative 5. Sorry, because 2 minus 7 is negative 5. All right, so there you go. Not too bad. Last one for this sheet. If the third term, u3, equals 8, and the eighth term, u8, equals negative 17, find un. So it's asking for the general term. So we know that un for an arithmetic sequence, which is what it tells us, is equal to the first term, which uh, we don't know what that is. So we're going to have to find the first term. But then we're going to add n minus 1 times d. So we're going to need the first term. We're also going to need the difference. The n will stay n, because since it's the general term, we want to be able to put in any number and find any term. So here we go. Let's see if we can figure out what u1 and d are. Well, I know that each time I go from one term to the next, I should be adding or subtracting the same thing. So if I go from u3 to u8, all right, so if we, we can picture this in our mind. So here's u3, then I've got u2, then I've got u1, and then I've got u4, u5, u6, u7, and then u8. So if I'm going from 3 to 8, I'm going to do that constant difference. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. So if I can find the total difference between 3 and 8, that's a common, not a 1. If I can find the total difference and then divide it by 5, I'll know how big each of those steps is. Pretty good idea, huh? Let's do it. So here we go. I'm going to do u8, which is negative 17 minus u3, because it's always the final minus the initial, so minus 8. And then we're going to divide it by 5, because there's 5 steps between that negative 17 and that negative 8, which just so happens that that is negative 25 over 5, which is negative 5. So my common difference is negative 5. That's d. So now all I need is the first term. Well, now that should be pretty easy, because I know that this is 8. This is negative 17, and I'm subtracting 5 each time. So this would be 3, negative 2, negative 7, negative 12. So now I just need to go back the other way two steps. You can do that. You can also plug in some numbers, right? If you just want to find the first term, you can put 1 in for n. So you can do either 1, and you can either count back, or you can solve. So let's do it both ways to show that we can. So if I want to find the first term, that will equal u1 plus 1 minus 1 times d. Well, guess that's not going to work. This is going to cancel out. We're going to get u1 equals u1. Well, it was a good idea. Sometimes things work. Sometimes they don't. And that's all right. We'll just go ahead and count back. So I'm going to need to add 5 to get there. So this will be 13. And then add 5 to get there which will be 18. There you go. U1 is 18, so we can finally write, oh, what in the world just happened? That was sneaky. i got to get used to this touch screen. UN equals the first term, which was 18, plus N minus 1, because the N is still there, and then times D, which was negative 5. All right, I think that's enough. I got, I'm punching enough strange buttons for now, so let's go ahead. If you want to watch the next one, that'll be geometric sequences. Ciao.